Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, after this little break, this coffee break, I shall give you a little talk about how your carbohydrate metabolism is influenced by the depleted water, the deuterium depleted water. So uh, these things uh, came into our focus because the first time they realized that if a patient was treated with a DDV, the deuterium depleted water, somehow the diabetic patient has a little bit lower sugar level. So they needed less insulin. And the physicians are aware that if somebody is coming, they are asking all the time whether they are ingesting or some kind is treated with the deuterium water or not. So this is why we started to ask the question, is there any effect on the carbohydrate metabolism or not? So let's test this one. So first of all, we had to choose some kind of animal model. I have to leave it this, animal model to test this diabetes. There are two types of diabetes, the main type of diabetes, as you know. There's a type one, this is insulin-dependent diabetes, and another one is type two, that usually affecting the elderly patient. And uh, of course, that would be much, uh, much more interesting than type two. However, it's more difficult to have an animal model. So this is why we focused on animal model, the first type. And we induced the diabetes on the rat, and this is an antibiotic that can somehow immunogenically destroy the beta cells, the pancreatic beta cells, and causes a diabetes of the mouse. And we tested how the DDV uh, affecting the carbohydrate metabolism of these animals. The first thing that we wanted to see is any effect or not. This is how we shall start it, because if it's no effect after, we don't need to talk about anything. So, but I, let's see, my talk is a little bit longer, so for sure there is some result. So let's see what we did. First of all, we induced the diabetes. We administered the streptotoxin to the animals. And after two weeks, we checked the blood sugar of the animals. And of course, it went up to the sky. Normally, the animals has around five minimal of sugar as a normal one and normal people. And now it went up to 60 or 40. So that can induce, for example, a human. It's a nice uh, ketogenic uh, uh, reaction or coma. And after we started to administer all the tap water, this tap water is 150 uh, ppm of the deuterium it, it has, and another group of animals received uh, less deuterium containing uh, drinking water. And after we checked the two weeks and the fourth week, we checked the following parameters. We checked the glucose level, the serum glucose level, the fructose amine, and the uh, hemoglobin 1AC level. As you know that, as long as we have a glucose metabolism, this can, let's say, glycate the proteins, and that will cause the eye effect and the glomerular effect, the kidney problems, and another side effect of the diabetes usually is correlated with this long-term effect of the glucose metabolism. And we check the urine as well for the glucose protein and the creatinine. Now let's see what we got for the first, let's see, uh, gunshot experiment where they did. So first of all, this is a control value that we do have. The animals has a very low level of the sugar. It's about, let's see, there's a 7-1. These they are not fasting uh, blood glucose level. This is uh, what we have. If we didn't have any kind of insulin treatment in these animals, of course, the sugar level is, was very high in these animals. Now, after we wanted to test whether the deuterium, if we deplete the deuterium, this alone can affect the sugar level or not. As you see here, there's no effect. So it's at the, if you decrease the deuterium or if you influence the deuterium content of the water, there's no effect on the sugar level. However, if you started to add insulin, so when we started to induce somehow the, uh, the glucose metabolism in the body, this uh, depletion of the deuterium somehow potentiated, let's see, the glucose uptake. So these animals had lower glucose level, whoever received insulin. And measuring the fructose, I mean, this is a fructose, I mean, this is an albumin part that is uh, glycated. You can see that together with insulin, that is much less comparing to, let's see, the other group and very similar to the hemoglobin 1AC level. Again, it's much lower comparing to the tap water. So it meaning that uh, this uh, depletion only affected the insulinic effect. So somehow interfere with the insulinic effect. That's okay because in type 2 diabetes, the patient does have insulin. However, the problem is the insulin cannot affect on the target tissue because it has resistance. Now let's continue this and let's see 
uh, is that this effect is dose dependent or not. This should be dose dependent if some kind of correlation to the mechanism. And another one, what is the underlying mechanism? Because uh, without any mechanism, we cannot sell the story. Now what we did, we repeated a very similar setup, except we used different groups in different doses of the deuterium. We went from 25 to up to 150, and we do have increased, let's see, the dose of 5 ppm, so it was very precise, the setup, and we again measured the very similar <coughs> parameters. Now let's see how the blood glucose level changed if we changed the deuterium content of the drinking water. As you see here, this is the PPM, this increases, so that's a tap water. When we started to withdraw the deuterium, somehow the glucose level, the animal received the same amount of insulin, every animal has, but they received different uh, type, different dose of the deuterium. So as you see that at the beginning it's rapidly affected the glucose uptake, and after it's reached, let's see, a steady state, but it looks like it has an optimum of this curve, and this optimum was about 130, 135 ppm. The fructose amine level, very similarly, it has looks like as an optimum curve, and it's very similarly, it was about 130, 135, and if we check the hemoglobin A1C level, very similarly, uh, not the lowest doses, not the highest dose, but around 100, 135, it was the optimum of this uh, uh, concentration. Another one is very similar because we could see on the animals. If we looked at the different groups of the animals, they looked completely differently. The nice group that we had about the 135, they looked nice, almost same as a control, and we looked at another one, they were, let's see, a little sick uh, shaped animal, so they, let's see, they, they starved, they looked like, because they, what they did, they ate a lot and pissed a lot, because the glucose, the energy, usually what they intake in, it's pissed out immediately. But these animals somehow, if you are looking at, this is the control, so only this uh, four weeks period, only they didn't get any weight. But when we induce, let's see, we use different dose of the deuterium, as you see here, for example, this is a control with a squared, and this is the 135. So it looks like the gain of the weight is correlated very well with the glucose utilization. So these animals, whoever received a little bit less deuterium, somehow they utilized the glucose more efficiently, and this way they incorporated into the body. This is why they gained weight. Now when we look at, let's see, the food intake, because they're very important, how much food they ingest. If they ingested the food and pissed out, they always eat it and drink it. That was the animals, what the diabetic animal does. As you see here, it again has an optimum. Here, the tap water, of course, they ingested a lot of food, but when we decrease the deuterium content, they need less food and they gain much more weight. So this way, they utilize more efficiently the food or they digest it. Another one very important from the drinking water. Of course, this uh, high glucose concentration will cause, it's cause uh, osmotic diuresis. This is why the glucose is taking the water out. This is why the diabetic sh patient should drink. Now, these animals drink a lot. If you look at normally, a uh, rat drinks about 30 ml per water per day. Now, these animals had about almost 300 ml per day, so about 10 times more. Now, that's very good, for example, in this point of view, not for Gabor, because he had to supply a lot of water to us. But uh, it means this animal, let's see, turned around the water content. What we have, let's see, about 60% of the water that we do have, so a 70 kilograms person has about 42 kilograms of water, but, and we cannot drink this amount of water per day, so of course, but this animal had about the same as they weight. So I had the same drink, about 300 ml, 300 grams per day. So that's, that's about the same. So for sure, it take about one or several days, and they exchanged completely, let's say, the water content of the body. So, but from this view, we said, okay, we do have an optimum, and very similar optimum, what the glucose uh, concentration showed. Uh, this value, let's see, uh, this is the, how the insulinic affected on this body. What we did in this experiment, we gather several animals from the several groups, and we ingested insulin to this, to this uh, rat, and we checked how the blood glucose level changed in this animal. 
As you see here, those animals who was treated, let's see, this is 125, 135. These insulin affected the blood glucose level is more efficiency, so the changes is much higher, comparing to the tap water or the less uh, DDV containing uh, tap water. So what can be the cause? There's two possibilities. One, the elimination of the insulin is different in different animals. Maybe the DD or the deuterium interfere with the insulin metabolism, the insulin catabolism. So for this, we are checked how the insulin disappears from the bloodstream. What we did, again, we collected several animals from different groups, and we ingested the insulin, and we measured the insulin level in the serum. And what we got, we checked for 12 hours. As you see, that doesn't matter which group that we obtained the animals, but the insulin uh, concentration in the blood changed similarly. So there's no different effect, let's see, on the metabolism of the insulin. So we cannot say that this, uh, this animal, whoever received the same amount of insulin, let's see, the insulin catabolized less efficiently. This is why the insulin could affect, let's see, longer time of the body. So there's no difference. Another one, let's see the insulin effect. Maybe the insulin or the post-receptor insulin effect is uh, altered. For this one, we checked. Uh, the translocation of the GLUT4 protein. The GLUT4 protein, uh, it's uh, important to take, let's see, the glucose into the body. Several tissues, several organs uh, using this kind of transport system. We do have an insulin-dependent or non-insulin-dependent transport system, but the GLUT4 is an insulin-dependent one. So we do need insulin to activate this transport system. Unless we start exercise, because exercise can induce somehow this translocation in an unknown mechanism. So we checked how the GLUT4 translocation changed in these different animals, different treated animals. As you see here, this is the tap water. And when we started to, let's see, uh, alter the deuterium content of the drinking water, the translocation of this protein increased to the membrane fraction meaning that ins insulin, let's see, uh, induced this both to the, let's see, the membrane that can uptake the glucose and, let's see, can uh, take the glucose up to the cell and can be utilized. These are the spots, the representative spots for the different kids. You can see some darker spots, uh, meaning that there are more protein in the membrane induced by this insulinic effect. And this is the control animals. Doesn't matter whether we treat it with 25 or 100. These are not diabetic animals. This is a control animals that they are obtaining the glucose content. Almost we got back almost the same data uh, talking about the GLUT4 transport system. So let's summarize what we got. First of all, of course, we could induce diabetes. This is not a big deal. Another one, however, if we start to lower the deuterium content of the water, that interfere with the insulin-induced, let's see, glucose utilization. That's very good, so some, some mechanism. Now, uh, this deuterium uh, did not influence, let's see, the elimination of the insulin, but it's influenced the GLUT4 protein system, the transport expression of this protein system. Now, let's see the conclusion. What can we conclude out of this data? First of all, this is for sure that this depletion, deuterium depletion, can enhance the GLUT4 translocation induced by insulin. But what can be the mechanism? Uh, first of all, we couldn't have any idea and after we searched in the literature because uh, the Spanish wax we shouldn't figure out. And very interesting, about 20 or 30 years ago, they used deuterium to stabilize the microtubules intracellularly. These microtubules, especially, they are trafficking the intracellular signaling. And they use deuterium to somehow to conserve or fix this kind of machinery. Now, this is a hypothesis only. I haven't tested anything. But if we decrease the deuterium content, relatively more and more chance that this intracellular transporting system working more efficiently. So that's much easier to, let's see, take a protein R to the membrane or take the signal into the uh, <laughs> nucleus or into the cytoplasm. So this can be, let's say, some hypothesis, but we have to do some other work to clarify whether it's true or not. But one thing that somehow is affecting the insulinic effect. Thank you very much. That's it. Thank you very much. So the presentation is open for discussion.
Is there any question, remarks? What's it? So uh, glucose transport is definitely a, a very important aspect of this. Did you look at hepatic glucose production um, as the final output of plasma glucose measurement? Uh, what do you mean? But well, uh, in liver cells, the glucose yeah, genesis, no, yeah. we haven't tested the glycolysis, we haven't checked. Because uh, if um, hepatic glucose production is also decreased, then you see a more um, efficacious control of blood glucose levels. So th this is just one other aspect of continuing yeah, studying metabolism. These animals, they were not starving. So, I mean, when we checked the blood glucose level, we couldn't let's see, we draw the food from this animal. Because without the food, it's very difficult to survive, this animal. So uh, this is why we kept the food there, and this is why I don't think that the gluconeogenesis or glycolysis is turned on in this system, because if they are hungry, let's eat. So if you do have a food, you're always congesting a food, you don't need this postprandial whatever mechanism is turned on. So. Mm -hmm. Relatively, relatively, the liver produced glucose mechanism. I think it's, it's, it's not a big deal, but I haven't tested. Yeah, even in the fat state, about 30% of plasma glucose comes from hepatic glucose production, and it's net glucose production, meaning that glycerol contributes to um, restoring glucose levels. So it's, it's kind of a fine regulation, yet I would definitely consider just looking at Could be. It is uh, <coughs> when we make some uh, any experiment uh, according good laboratory practice or just experiment uh, for ourselves, we should be sure that it is uh, we change only one parameter. And it's uh, if we compare uh, water, here we not fix again. Uh, oxygen 18 and oxygen 17. And it's if we see uh, water uh, with uh, 135, it, uh, if it's, we got this uh, water from the uh, refinery col column, it means uh, oxygen is uh, about uh, two, uh, oxygen 18, for example, it's uh, 2000 ppm. And if uh, f for the uh, <coughs> 25 uh, ppm of deuterium, it is uh, oxygen 18, uh, it is about uh, 1,600. Uh, it means different in oxygen, it's uh, 400 ppm. And it could be that it is oxygen 18 or 17, act controversially. Uh, with this, and it's so, uh, w when we make some experiment, we have to be sure that it is, we absolutely have absolutely the same water. And it's, uh, of course, it could be like uh, this, uh, but to be sure, to be clear, uh, we have to <coughs> normalize water for the all, all parameter, not only with salinity, and uh, gas and temperature. Yes, it's just a comment. Okay, I agree, but uh, what we got this uh, deuterium depleted water, they already had, I think, some quality control, so they checked the de uh, deuterium content. I don't know whether they checked the isoform of the oxygen as well. <laughs> I have no idea about it. So I only used the water. So I assume that that water was that they gave me. As, as usually, it is uh, we have to measure all uh, all the top and uh, refinery reduce three three parameters. Yes, like this. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Dr. George is going to say something. Uh, say. It. Uh, uh, when when the deuterium is enriched, almost 200 percent. Uh, we, we, we 
produce uh, reactor grade heavy water. In that case, is the O18 level enriched two or three times more from the natural level, from the two tenths of atom percent. That means if we change the 150 ppm to 135, then the O18 uh, concentration change is negligible. It, yeah, so, so finally, what we are saying that when we increased with 6,000 times the deuterium level from the natural level, that can increase it two, three, four, the increase in the O18. And it, it means when we reduce from 150 ppm to 135, that can slightly modify the O18. So we do not believe that we really can, or we modify the, the composition of the water regarding the O18. So, and this is one thing we, we say that we don't believe that the O18 can, can have a very important role in that process. The other, we, at the beginning of these experiments, we had carried out uh, experiments when we used the deuterium depleted water and we add back the heavy water and that way we uh, got back the, the normal PPM for deuterium and in that case we couldn't see any difference. Saying that, so finally in that case the O18 we suppose was uh, adjusted to the normal level. So this is the reason. I'm not sure, of course, the key issue what, what Jakti just said, that, that the modification of, of O18 could be very, 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 very small comparing with the D concentration. But if the absolute, <coughs> absolute amount of the modification is higher, uh, higher than uh, deuterium, because uh, as I told it, it is, uh, if we change deuterium for the 100 ppm, uh, oxygen 18 changes for the 400 ppm. Okay, I, I'm sure, okay, we are very open for any yes, kind okay. of results which can say and, and compare different water miracles regarding the, the different oxygen isotopes. Yes. So, and yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, thank you.